Alan Smithy is one of Hollywood's most prolific directors, with over 103 films on his resume. With his body of work starting in 1969 and continuing to this day, in terms of the sheer number of films he's worked on, he's up there with John Ford, Woody Allen, Martin Scorsese, and other Hollywood giants, with the mysterious director averaging four films a year. However, unlike these Hollywood giants, and indeed unlike many directors in general, Smithy's filmography varies incredibly in style and quality, ranging from old-school westerns like his debut feature, Death of a Gunfighter, to extensive TV work, to schlocky sequels to classic horror films such as The Birds 2 and Hellraiser Bloodlines. There is also no known picture of this mysterious director. This is because Alan Smithy does not exist. He is a formality, a pseudonym used by directors who wish to officially distance themselves from projects that they felt had been taken from them. A standardised way for directors to divorce themselves from projects they felt were no longer theirs, but rather belonged to a meddling force beyond their control. But why can't directors not simply just remove their names from films? This isn't a problem in the world of non-Hollywood or independent cinema. However, in Hollywood filmmaking, the Directors Guild of America has strict rules that do not allow the use of pseudonyms, with the exception of the term Alan Smithy. Before the pseudonym was created, this rule was originally established to prevent studios and producers from forcing many directors to adopt pseudonyms, as was common practice in the early days of Hollywood, to prevent any one director from becoming too influential, and therefore being able to raise their own salary. This rule made sure that a director of a film could always be credited properly without having to prove their resume in future, giving less power to the studio and interfering producers. However, this was also a double-edged sword, as this prevented directors who felt that said meddling producers or studios had taken their films from them from removing their name from the project entirely, being forced to take credit for work that they felt they had not been in control of. This was the case until 1969, until the chaotic production history of Death of a Gunfighter changed the rule forever. The set of Death of a Gunfighter is very typical of the Hollywood of the time, with a star of the film, Richard Widmark, held most of the power amongst the cast, crew, and producers, as he knew that he was the main selling point of the film. After about 25 days of shooting, Widmark grew unhappy with the film's original director, Robert Totten, and conspired to have him removed from the film. Totten was replaced with Don Siegel, who then completed another 10 days of filming, and was also in charge of assembling the finished film. Once the film was completed, however, Siegel's cut of the film, the same cut that would end up being the finished film, comprised of about 50% of his own footage, while the other 50% was Totten's directorial work. Feeling that he had hijacked someone else's vision, Siegel did not want to claim credit for the film, and so asked that the original director be credited for it. However, Totten, angry that his film had been taken from him, and generally fed up with the production, also petitioned to have his name removed from the film. Both directors took their complaints to the DGA to settle the matter, and after hearing both claims, it was decided that the film would be credited to neither party, but instead a third party was to be invented, as it was clear that the film did not represent either director's creative vision. The name Alan Smithy was chosen, as it sounded common enough to be a real person, but also uncommon enough not to be confused with other directors working at the time. Hilariously, the fact that this wasn't a real person was not made clear to critics who watched the film, with many showering praise upon this new director. Roger Ebert himself is even credited with saying, Director Alan Smithy, a name I'm not familiar with, allows his story to unfold naturally. Contrary to popular belief, the name Alan Smithy is not immediately assigned to a film when the director does not wish to be credited, but must be applied for, and can only be granted when it is deemed that the film being presented truly has been taken out of the director's vision. This prevents the pseudonym from being used as a way for directors who had full control of a project to distance themselves from bad films they have created, or projects they are not proud of. It is purely for directors who feel as if they had lost control of a film they were working on. Since the creation of the original pseudonym, 
A number of well-known directors have petitioned to have their names removed from films that they felt were interfered with. Such as David Lynch for the film Dune, and Dennis Hopper for the film Catchfire, along with many, many more. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this Blumenthal Film Talk video. We upload every Friday, usually in our Context and Craft series. However, every so often, we'll upload something like this, something different, something to shake things up a little bit. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you give us a like? And hey, maybe subscribe to get more content like this every week.